a lifting device, such as the Hoyer lift, is most commonly used for those who cannot stand on their own or whose weight makes it unsafe to move or lift manually. Remember that moving someone using a mechanical lift can create fear for some people. And I think the biggest thing with that is to make sure that you're communicating with the patient during each of the steps and that you're moving slowly while you're going through and that of course that you're uh, making sure that you explain to the patient what you're going to be doing. And you know these are all things that will help to make the process a little bit easier and of course there's nothing more than practice makes perfect. Uh, you know making sure that again that uh, on the first time it may be a little unsettling and kind of warn the patient ahead of time. Never attempt to use a mechanical lift until you have been trained by a medical professional. One of the most important things about the overall use of the Hoyer to give it stability is that you want to make certain that you have the legs or the base all the way out. So you do that by as far as pulling back slightly on this lever and then bringing it all the way out. There are little catches in between, but obviously when you're looking for stability, you want to have it all the way out. And you also want to be certain that you have enough room to go underneath of the bed for these legs because they need to roll clear under. When you're looking at pumping the patient up or lifting them up, this is the handle here that you use for that. And you go down, you know, up and down, and that lifts up the whole unit. And then in order to let the unit down, there's a small knob here that you have to turn one way or the other to get it to go down. And you only need to turn just about a quarter turn because when there's weight in this, as far as of course it's going to come down much easier. So if you open it up too much, then it will go down too fast. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the overall T-bar setup. Uh, there is, as far as numerous different styles of these, depending upon how old it is and as far as what particular company it comes from. Uh, this one here has multiple types of hookups here. This one here is designed for the standard chain hookup. These here can be used uh, for your position and so forth. You do not want the patient to hold on up here. You want them to keep their arms crossed and not be holding on to any part of this because otherwise their fingers will get pinched. It is best to have two people when using a mechanical lift. In many care settings, it is a requirement that two people be present. Begin with the bed at a comfortable working height. All right, we have a sling here, and we do want to make sure that the sling with the whole part is positioned down by the buttocks area. And let's go ahead and roll the patient this way. And then we're going to position this so it's about halfway underneath of the patient. You want to make sure that that hole is right in the buttocks area. And for a rule of thumb, you want to make sure that the, as far as that the bottom part of this sling is about knee to mid thigh region, just so it doesn't slide out from underneath of the patient. Okay, now let's roll her back this way. And I'll finish pulling it out this side so we can get it well centered underneath of her. Okay, and then we'll roll her back to the middle. Okay, and let's kind of pull on both sides, make sure we're centered. We're going to talk about some positioning of the sling while the patient is in bed. So if you can envision that the patient is here, their head would obviously be here. Then you want to have this portion of the hole of the sling uh, be able to be situated down near the buttocks because this is used for bowel care access and so forth. So again, that would need to be down there. Then you, as far as the, the position of the patient needs to be central on this as much as possible so that as you lift them up, they're not going to be cocked-eyed one way or the other. So you want to make sure that that certainly is central. And then as far as positioning of this, this needs to be up underneath the shoulders. And then you want to have the lower part of the sling as far as down about kind of mid-thigh toward the knee region so that as you lift them up, they don't slide out of that sling. Okay, now when we're hooking up the chains, we do want to make sure there is a short and a long side of the chain. So you want to have the short side go to the upper part of the body. And then when you hook them in, you want to have this hook go away from the patient so that as it lifts up, this part doesn't dig into their arm. And of course, the same thing when you're doing it down here. And then this part here is what gets hooked uh, to the mechanical lift uh, for the actual lifting up of the patient. Of course, you would do that on each side. It's so important when you're doing these, you want to have the shorter chain go up to the front or the head of the patient, and you want to make sure that you have the hooks that they go out 
as far as away from the patient rather than toward the patient where they can gouge. Okay. And it's important to kind of think about that it's very unnerving when you're having, as far as a mechanical lift, lifting a person. So it's one of those things you really have to be conscious that while you're doing these that you're moving slowly, kind of letting the patient know what you want them to do to help. So let's position this in here now. We'll lower it down so we can hook up. At this point, you want to make sure the patient has their arms crossed across their chest so that they don't get in the way of the chains. Okay, she hooked that side up. I'll hook this side up. And to review the placement of the sling, center the sling under the body from the mid thigh to the upper shoulder. The opening is placed near the buttocks. The shorter chain is attached at the shoulder. The hooks face away from the body. The arms are crossed over the chest. For our purposes, this depends a lot upon the debility of the patient, but a lot of times what I like to have done is I like to have the second person helping to support underneath of the patient's head just while they're being lifted up because as far as that way it won't extend back and cause some damage to their neck. You also want to make sure that you are, as far as bringing those legs all the way out so you have full stability of that unit while you're moving the patient and lifting them. And you also want to go nice and slow so that you're not jerking the patient. Doing okay? Yes. And when you lift them up, you don't want to go clear up as high as the unit will go because that just makes them more unstable. So you want to go just high enough so that their bottom is clearing the bed and that way they're much more stable in that position rather than being dangling up in midair. And I think we're there, okay? To lift the patient off the bed, support her head. Widen the legs of the lift for stability. Begin to lift by slowly pumping the handle. Lift only as far as necessary, just enough to clear the bed. Okay, if you'll come around to this side. In this instance, it's good as far as if the patient doesn't have any use at all of their legs, if the second person can kind of grab and help to stabilize while you're moving the patient off the bed toward the chair. And we'll move real slowly. It's important also to not move this any further than you need to with the patient in it because that just gives you that much more chance to either, you know, have something go wrong with the lift or to, as far as be a lot tougher on you moving it and then move the wheelchair underneath of it. And you do want to make certain that you are locking the wheelchair so it is stable. And let's go ahead and, and also what I like to be able to do is to grab on the sides of the sling so I can position her as far back into the chair and then kind of get her central in the chair. And you can even kind of let the chair come back just a little bit. So again, they get their bottom all the way into the back of the chair. Okay, and if you'll go ahead and Turn the knob just real slowly. And we want to have her go down nice and slow. Good positioning. Okay. Whoop, they can go nice and slow. Stop right about there. And then, as far as we want to push this back a little bit because as this comes down, Mr. Forge, can you go ahead and stop that knob? There you go. Because as this comes down, this can hit the patient in the head, so you want to make sure that this is pushed away from them. Some of them are not padded. This is a newer one, so it is padded, so it doesn't cause injury to the face or forehead of the patient. To transfer the patient to the wheelchair, support the legs. Move the lift only as far as necessary Move the wheelchair under the patient. Lock the wheelchair. Guide the patient toward the back of the wheelchair. Loosen the knob to begin lowering. Protect the patient's head when lowering the lift. Then tighten the knob to stop the lift from lowering further.
And then my job back here on the back is I'm going to kind of be positioning these things in so that they don't hook up on anything as you just gently lift on that. Whoops, go ahead. This is the pumper here. And as far as make sure that that knob is tight so that it will hold. And go up nice and slow. Okay, you ready to go up then, up out of the chair? Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to give... Okay, hold on just a second, Beth. Make sure... Okay, go up a little bit more. And this is kind of a narrow wheelchair because it's definitely... Okay, keep going up. Doing okay? Yes. Okay, good. All right. We, okay, and that's good enough there. Okay. If you can hold her feet, I'm going to pull the wheelchair out. Okay, you doing all right? Yes. Okay, we're ready to move you. And just in the movement of this with weight in it, it's really not as easy as it appears. So you certainly want to make sure uh, that you've got everything out of the way. And we're going to lift her up a little bit more because we want to get her just so she clears the height of the bed. Doing okay there? Yes. Okay. All right. And let's go ahead and go on in. And if you can grab here on these chains and just kind of pull her a little bit toward the center of the bed as we lower her. Okay, you all right? Yeah. Okay. We're going to go down nice and slow. And then kind of support her head too as she comes back just so that it doesn't flop. Okay. And we'll stop before it gets to where it's going to hit her and then we can go ahead and pull out. To return to bed, Make sure the chains are inside the wheelchair. Support the legs. Move the wheelchair away from the lift. Center the patient over the bed. Slowly lower the patient onto the bed as you support the head. Then unhook the chains and remove the sling. It's always best to have two people when using a mechanical lift but sometimes it's not possible, especially in a home setting. Just talking a minute about the bed, you want to make sure that the bed is raised up as high as it'll go. That's a comfortable height for you, the worker, but also to make sure that you have room for the uh, Hoyer or the mechanical lifting device to slide under and not uh, have problems bumping into the armrests and that. So as far as with the sling, we're going to go ahead and spread the sling out here and I'm going to reach across. And for the patient, then I'm going to roll the patient towards me. Okay, and I'm going to position the sling so that I have, as far as the hole in the sling, needs to come down towards the buttocks area. And you want to have the bottom of the sling be right about where the knee or mid-thigh area. And here I'm pushing it about halfway under the patient, just so that as I roll her back, then I can push the other end, or pull the other end, as far as you know, under so I can get to it from both sides. Okay, now we'll go ahead and roll her back. Don't have to go too far. And I'm going to reach under and pull, pull everything. And you want to make sure that the patient is centered as much on this as you can. So you may have to kind of do a little bit of pulling on it from side to side. And I always I want to make sure that I have the Hoyer legs all the way out so it's going to be stable when I lift the patient. Okay. And you have your chain here. And you always want to make sure that you have the short part of the chain going toward the head of the patient. And you want to make sure that the hook is hooked so it's going away from the patient so it does not end up hitting into them or as far as gouging them as you lift the patient up. And you do that both at the upper part and the lower part. 
And to let this down, there's a knob down here that I just need to turn slightly to allow the whole level of this to drop down. And have the patient keep their arms in so that nothing uh, as far as pokes into their arms while you're doing the lifting. And so I'm going to come across and get everything hooked up, make sure that she's again central here. Okay, you comfortable? Yes. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring this handle around this side, make sure that this is tight so that it's going to hold as I lift it up. And also a lot of times I want to reach under the patient's head so that I can help to support their head as you're lifting them up. Just kind of helps to support that so their head doesn't hyperextend. And you want to go up nice and slow. And making sure that their arms stay inside the whole time. And you want to go up slow because, like I say, the patient really gets a sensation of being, you know, rocked and jarred if you're going up quickly. And you only want to come up high enough just so that their bottom clears the bed because the further you go up, the more unstable they are. And if you're doing this with one person, as far as again, for positioning of the patient, I like to be down here so I can hold onto their feet. And then I'm going to bring this around this side, make sure that we're up far enough. And then as I pull back on this, I'll kind of gently help to support the patient as they come across. And I don't want to travel any further than necessary with this because it just makes it that much more unstable for the patient. And ordinarily also, I would have that wheelchair locked so that it's not going to move at all as I push the patient towards it. And then bring everything into there. And then for positioning for me, again, I want to kind of make sure that the patient is central in the wheelchair, hold their knees, and then very gently turn this knob so it releases the lift and allows the patient to start coming down. You doing okay? Yes. And you don't want to come down too far without pulling this forward because this here can come in contact with the patient's head and cause some damage. So pull it slightly forward. Okay. As far as you want to make sure that you're not just using your arm, you want to try to use your body weight as you're going up because this isn't really as easy as it might look to lift this up depending upon the weight of the patient, it may still be fairly stressful. So make sure that you're kind of using your body weight. And again, you know, only go up as far as what's needed on that to start off with. And let's pull this chair out of the way now. And we'll turn. And once we get the patient up towards the bed, then we'll do the rest of the lifting up to get her so that she just clears the height of the bed. And again, I pick up on here. This just gives me some control here as I push her in. Okay. And also, as I lower her, I want to kind of push a little bit on her so that, you know, as I let her down, she goes into the center of the bed rather than at the side of the bed. And again, I just barely want to turn this knob so she goes down nice and slow. Kind of stop about part way. Make sure her head is supported as she comes down. And don't let the bar come all the way down. Stop just 
so it's above her so you have room to then unhook the chains. I think the most important thing for using a lift is to be able to follow your training, to look at your training and to be able to follow all of those steps sequentially and not get in a hurry because I think often people get in a hurry when they're using the device or even doing a regular transfer sometimes we have a tendency to get in a hurry. So slowing down, using the appropriate steps and making sure that you've planned ahead and moved things out of the way so that you can move from point A to point B without having to stop and start again. Thank you.